Welcome back to the Cheeky Crypto Podcast with your hosts, Mike, JB, and Chris. Many thanks for listening in, liking, and subscribing. If you haven't done so, do us a favor and smash that like and subscribe button and turn on all notifications. Really do appreciate it. If you haven't joined the Discord or Patreon, link is in the description down below. A fantastic community tongue. So 24-7, I guarantee you won't be disappointed. And most importantly, it's absolutely free to join. Now let's get into some crypto talk. JB, my friend, how are you today? After Take 23, I'm very good. Thank you very much, guys. Been quite an exciting day here. Bitcoin's done a hell of a pump. Really good to see you. Seen some good market movements. Obviously, we're going to see some more. Some big news coming out of America. So, yeah, it's been quite good to see. Some other big things happening today. So, all good. Watching the World Cup right now. All around, all good, guys. How are you doing, Chris? Yeah, good. It's been an ordeal getting to this point of the podcast. <laughs> like, <laughs> jokes. Um <laughs> Yeah, look, maybe there'll be some outtakes at the end. Uh, we're, we'll see if Mike, if Mike lets me. <laughs> no um, outtakes allowed on this one. <laughs> no outtakes. Maybe I'm not allowed. Um, but yeah, no, I'm I'm good. Like, joking aside, uh, an awful lot going on today uh, is like a, an understatement, really. Like, inside crypto and, you know, with Cheeky Crypto is just, yeah, lots of lots of stuff happening, man. It's, uh, it's, it's a good it's a good problem to have in a bear market. <laughs> yeah, y'all's, I mean, the amount of stuff, like, so before we got on the podcast, the reason we did take 23 is because me, Chris, and JB were having a conversation for probably like 25 minutes prior to starting this. So of course I get into it. And guess what, everyone? I screwed up my own intro. So anyways, that's why JB said take 23. But Cheeky Crypto's got a lot going on. Chris, dude, like the stuff that you were telling me and JB that's coming is, how do you have enough time in the day, first of all, to do all the stuff that you're doing? It's, it's, it's kind of wild. Yeah, look, like we've got a pretty decent sizable team, really, to, to be able to do half the stuff takes a team to, to do it. Like We can't do this stuff like just Nick and myself anymore. And um, yeah, look, there'll be a cheeky crypto vlog coming and i guess the reason we're able to do that is because we're just recording stuff we're doing right like there's no additional time apart from editing and you know the team might have to take some some ownership over editing the the vlog channel and um, this will probably be the first team have heard about it um <laughs> so <laughs> there you go. Uh, yeah maybe maybe keith won't want to clip that one um <laughs> <laughs> um and then we're gonna we're gonna have the cheeky crypto gaming channel as well and um look this is something that's been in the pipeline for an awful long time right and um we we've kind of kept it to ourselves for for well over a year um cornucopia is aware of it because we we had conversations with those guys when we were first um talking about the partnership that we we now have with them um so the idea is to to do you know i guess you know general gaming you know like call of duty all that sort of stuff like streaming um we want to do it in a very very different way that we have never seen done before so we might not start off that way but we've got big plans for it and uh we're also going to do some you know crypto related games maybe cornucopius maybe sandbox maybe decentraland um you know uh, various different things so it's going to be something that's really really interesting and really really cool i will uh link everything and all the details and everything in the uh discord uh, and it won't just be nick and myself doing it right like um as you mentioned right the bandwidth isn't there to to be able to do all of this stuff um but we are certainly going to jump on as much as possible um because it could be uh an awful lot of fun to to be doing it and maybe you know it, it's going to be good for, for nick and myself because all we do is crypto right like all the time like I can't remember the last time I picked up a controller, which is a lie because I picked up a box that contains one <laughs> when I first mentioned it to you a moment ago, Mike. Yes, uh, but before did. then, I can't remember the last time I've touched a control pad for a, a console or a PC or, or anything like that. So, um, yeah, look, uh, excited about it. It's just one, well, two, two things that are happening that we've kind of kept to ourselves for a while. Um, it's a real shame that a few people left the team um because we have big plans um but you know those those people are expendable and replaceable so you know maybe there'll be some some new faces on here as well so yeah super excited uh jb i know you're hyped about the gaming because you and i have been talking about call of duty we've been playing a lot of call of duty chris before we got on here chris was talking about 
you know, the gaming channel being cornucopious and sandbox. And I'm like, nah, that shit could be Call of Duty because a lot of the people in Discord love Call of Duty. And I think the other day I put something out on there uh, in the Discord asking, you know, who plays COD. And then, uh, of course, all the shit talking starts at that point because mm-hmm. you're not a gamer unless you can shit talk, basically. But I think the gaming channel is going to be a lot of fun. I think it's going to be it's going to allow people to see a different side of everybody. Yeah. Uh, I think that would be exciting, too. Um, I just want to let everyone know, though, that I am the best Call of Duty player in the Cheeky Crypto community. And if you would like to challenge me, I will send you my gamer tag and we can go all out. Uh, but anyways, just wanted to throw that out there. Chris didn't like that very much. No, but... no, because because uh, like, yeah, watch this space because eventually I will be the best. <laughs> Well, I'm going to tell you now, me, it won't be immediate. <laughs> if anybody wants to challenge me, I'm simply the worst Call of Duty player in the Chief <laughs> family. So if you want to challenge me, ask for my gamer tag. I'll happily show you how bad I am. You'll get a good laugh if we get on there playing Call of Duty. I don't care how bad I am. I'm getting better, but you know, it's a good laugh. We we'll go in there and just talk some stuff. We have a lot of some fun. Stuff. Yeah, yeah, we, yeah. Have, we definitely not, have a lot of not fun. Not just that, though. I'd like to obviously get on there. A bit of FIFA over here. FIFA's huge. Madden, NBA everything just let's open let's open this up let's make it good maybe get some of the community in there we can play and play with them you know it's i think this is i think this is good it's really big yeah i'm yeah. looking forward to it good, i, I good agree I, I think it'd be really cool for engagement and to get many people on, on it and involved in it right you know you don't just watch the channel be be part of the channel so yeah look i think there's 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 an awful lot that we're we're going to be working on um there will likely be a production team that sat behind it which we haven't got for everything else right we don't have a production team in the background for for this stream for example we don't have it for nick and myself when we do the uh, twitch um streams and the youtube videos and stuff like that um, but that's going to be something that starts to to get incorporated into to the channel. So there's going to be a lot of leveling up. There's going to be a, a new studio that I'm going to have in the in the coming months. Um, there is an awful lot going on, and um, you know Nick and myself might actually be looking to to purchase some commercial property um, and and do some some really really cool stuff here in the UK. Um, but yeah, look, I'm just not in a position to really go into the full details nick and myself are very early stages in, uh, you know of, of conversations about this but we're both very much aligned and both think that it'd be really really cool so there's a there's an awful lot of stuff you know uh happening for, for cheeky crypto and you know we're talking about this in a bear market right can you imagine what it's going to be like when you know we're in a bull market it's going to be something else like mark my words. i don't know if i don't know if you'll have enough staff for the bull market i mean we're really going to have to prepare for that we honestly. will have to ramp up and and i don't think it's i don't think it's getting to a point like it's bragging or anything it's just not the, the the information that chris nick and all of us provide the community is just immense and it, it's why the community stays it's why there's over 5,500 people in the Discord talking about crypto literally 24-7. There is people from all over the entire world that is always in our general chat talking about crypto, whether it be about charts, Bitcoin, NFTs, gaming, you name it, it's talked about, right? Uh, do you want to talk about, I don't know if you want to, do you want to talk about the um, what happened with Richie today? I don't know yeah, if you want to talk about I, that. I, I can touch on it briefly. Um, and I think the, you know, it's all re- sort of revolves around our NFT project in a way because we've got the cheeky verse NFT um, VIP pass. Um, basically, there was originally going to be 10,000 of these NFTs. Uh, we got to a point and we were like, OK, they're not really selling out. And um, actually, we think rather than just keeping them listed, it'd be really good to just basically as a big thank you to everybody that did have the the belief in us at the very start um we'll just burn them the the ones that haven't sold so i gave everybody a week or two and i kind of just said i'm going to burn them so if you want to get one get one like in the next week or two um and then they're burnt right the rest of them that that are unsold so we've only got 269 of these nfts 
Uh, and I know that a few of them are lost already. Yeah, like through people's mistakes, they, you know, uh, bought one and went to an exchange. Someone else um, didn't untick uh, a box on the URI wallet and sent all of their NFTs and all of their ADA to an exchange, which meant that they lost all their NFTs. And these are just a couple of uh, examples of how people have lost them. So it's actually less than 269 in total. Um, now, Nick and myself never needed the funding from the NFTs in order to build out what we wanted to do. So one one of those uh, things was to purchase land in um, play to earn games and metaverse and um, have a club set up where um, we might hold music events. We uh, will definitely be holding networking events. So the idea is to get some prominent CEOs of like top tier um, projects in the crypto space uh into to, to the club and have the the members the vip holders be able to go in and and chat and network and, and stuff like that so i think this is like really really cool because it's like having a private club but you can visit the private club from the comfort of your own home if that makes sense so um yeah look we're still working on all of that and uh you know we've we've got a fair few plots of land in different games and uh, metaverses and, and stuff like that so we're we figure out where we want to be maybe we want to be in all of them maybe we just want to be in one or two of them uh, and so on but um initially we were selling the cheeky verse nfts at like 249 ada uh, which was a bargain um they are now floor price of 2200 which is crazy in my in my mind um, but, you know, uh, they are selling at that as, as well, right? There's 21.4 thousand in volume so far um, since we announced the partnership with Cornucopius um, and Cryptopia. So Cryptopia, I long winded this one, sorry. Um, Cryptopia are basically part of the utility for this uh, NFT pass. So not only do we have the private club where you can do the networking or we will have, um, you will also get access to private sales um, as well as, um, you know, uh, I guess uh, early entrance into other partnership NFT drops and stuff like that, because we are going to make avatar clothing uh, for for games and metaverses. So the partnership with Cornucopius, we've got the race suit NFT, which is an in-game asset. Um, you know, people that hold these NFTs will get uh, early priority access to, to be able to purchase one of those. Um, but the, uh, the uh, what do you call it the private sales through Cryptopia and Richie they just had one today um, for the Board Ape Golf Club which is uh, obviously like in partnership with Yuga Labs um, so yeah it's a pretty pretty uh, decent looking project with some really great utility and you own the IP to it so um, you know you can run your own business off of the back of like a a board eight golf club nft so yeah really really excited about this one and uh yeah it's like 74 percent um sold already so um and that's with adding an additional 30 uh which they managed to to beg for yeah it was an original 30 that yeah. sold out in two and a half hours just yeah. through the discord right like yeah like basically what chris is trying to explain is the the cri cri cryptopia is specifically for cheeky discord right like our cheeky cheeky crypto members yeah right? it's, it, it's 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 literally just for the nft holders correct yeah Got it. so so yeah look um there's like i say 269 people well less than that now because obviously uh a couple that sure. I'm, I'm aware of uh, you know gone they're missing um so yeah look uh you know it's a it's, it's great access like and you'll be able to get this access purchasing one of the cornucopius race suit uh, nfts that we've designed yeah. for, for cornucopius right so yeah there'll be another 7400 people that will be able to get access to to these sorts of level of um you know private sales and i've i've been talking to richie and there there is at least one more monstrous project coming yeah I'm, i mean everything that richie's brought to the community so far has been has been great stuff and yeah. you know obviously you do your own you do your own research on what whatever richie presents but i think anything that richie presents chris is going to look over too and before they kind of like let us look at it you know i think it's 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 dug into first so that mm -hmm. you know obviously there is some risk right like it's the beginning yeah. stages of of a project so there's always going to be risk so 
you got to kind of manage your own risk management at that point. Uh, but you know, I, I, I bought one today. My first yeah. one I bought pretty excited. Nick and myself, Nick, Nick and myself have yep. obviously bought in as well. You know, like, you know, it's, it's one of those, like, we don't buy all of them that Richie presents, but you know, if we, we do like it and we, we buy and when we buy, like, I, I think people see it as like a really like strong signal uh, <laughs> and they do sell out quite quickly. <laughs> I personally managed to get the second last one on the original 30. I yeah. rushed home from work. Mike was texting me, was messaging me, is that you, <laughs> you've got to get home, you've got to get on this quickly. I got in, it was shot up to 94%. So I'm a shoot, I think there was only two left after me, sorry. And then we helped a couple of members um, get over the line, getting theirs as well. And I think Richie was quite taken aback by how quickly they sold out. Uh, how yeah, he wasn't were interested. Yeah, he was not expecting that at all. He was like, but, but hey, to Richie's point. So he said, hey, it's sold out. Richie goes, well, let me see if I can get some more. And by the grace of God, Richie's like, all right, guys, we got 30 more we could do. And then that just went wham. Like it's already at 80% filled. So, you know, it's pretty cool. Dope. So project, look, lots of things happening. And I know all of that was very long winded for an intro and kind of all that. But let's get into some crypto talk, boys, about the markets today. Let's talk about CPI numbers. CPI came in at 7.1%, expected was 7.3. This morning was a massive rally across the board for the Dow, the NASDAQ, S&P, crypto, Bitcoin shot through the freaking moon. Bitcoin got all the way to 18,000 to the cent which still to this day, I don't understand how that happens, to the cent. And yeah, now let me go look. The Dow is now at just plus 0.18%. So all the hype this morning has already come back down. Gentlemen, what's our thoughts? JB, we'll go to you first. Well, we spoke about it before. Nick speaks about it all the time. Binance loves a round number to hit 18,000 on the nose. It's, it's not surprising. It's good to see. But when we still look at the charts, the, the four hour, the eight hour, the daily, they're all horrible. So what does this spell for the rest of the week? What else is happening this week? Any other announcements this week? We know there is. There's some big things happening. I yes. still expect some big moves. Everything's overbought. There's only one thing going to happen, guys. Yeah, to I look, I uh so this morning, right after I got off of Chris and Nick's Twitch stream. Uh, there was another YouTube channel that went live that I took a look at. And, you know, they're excited about the um, the numbers that came in. Bitcoin was pumping and they're like, there it is, guys. We broke out of this structure, broke out of these trend lines. And we're going to the moon, off to the races. What happened? Right. Like now it's stopped. So it's it. This this just comes back down to be careful who you're following. Right. Like be careful what you're looking at. Like right now, as I'm speaking, the Dow Jones turned red. Okay. So just because the CPI numbers come, come in the way they did does not change the overall macro outlook of the global economy. Chris, you agree? Oh, look, completely. Like, uh, I, I just kind of look at everything and I just call me cynical, but I just see a pocket of liquidity for, for wealthy people to exit their position, uh, you know, in, in, in cryptocurrency. And uh, look, is it being manufactured? How deep does it go? We all know it's it's you know this this whole system, this whole world is corrupt to to levels that I don't think people can really comprehend. Um, so look, yeah, I, I just I do see you know more downside, and uh, you know maybe it's a pocket of liquidity for people to think the same way as me. But you know you've got to go make your own decisions on on that, and um, you know. I, I just think that we've got better opportunities ahead and maybe that's Q1 uh, 2023. I think one thing you say there, it's, it's structured, it's, it works to a T. For it to hit exactly 18,000, it's, it's hit that for a reason. It's most likely a liquidity grab. But as soon as this happened, obviously Nick then put out another update on YouTube saying this is a potential structure that we are in. It never hit the 18,000, I think it was 72 cent for it to become an impulsive structure, we've still not hit that. We have fell back down. So as Mike touched on, like, be careful who you're following. If you need any other proof, then that's surely more proof than anybody ever needs for who you need to follow right now. You I know, just, has calls have been on, on, on point. I just think for it to, if there's a true rally and, and everything's on reversal, 
you would not see the Dow Jones shoot to 550 positive and then fall back down to negative 19, negative 20, negative 23. Like it's still falling right now. There is, these are just what Chris said, liquidity grabs, people trying to exit positions because they know the macro environment is still bearish as hell. And we're, we're just not there yet, right? And Wait, it's going to take a while. Tomorrow's, Wait, go ahead. Yeah, sorry. I was going to say, whales aren't buying yet. Like, whales yeah, aren't it's all retail. Buying. It's all retail, yeah. Yeah, it's interesting when you look at those graphs, when Nick brings up the crack in the whales, the sharks, the dolphins, and the shrimp, to see how much retail is continuing to FOMO in. Like, how many, how many FOMO'd in today? And then got it dumped on them, right? Like, it's because we're going back down. We're going to go back down. Tomorrow, JB said another big event, FOMC meeting tomorrow. I think it's 2 o'clock Eastern time, which is 7, 7 o'clock UK, UK, 7 p.m. UK. I think, I think that it's going to come in personally at 50 basis points, but I think that the, the meeting afterward, the conversation is going to be very hawkish, and it's going to be like I, he's going to say, we're not at 2% yet. We're going to continue to do rate hikes through the, you know, it's going to be one of those talks and the market's going to just tank like crazy. And then we're going to, you know, find a local bottom here soon in the next couple of weeks. I think then we could have a rally, but then I think everything's going to dump back down unless something big happens. Like, you know, Russia finally pulls out. The war is over. I just think that Q1 and Q2 is just not going to be pretty. But, you know, it's great for everyone today if you were maybe... Maybe you got out of some trades that you needed to get out of. Maybe you're conserving your cash now at this point. Maybe today helped you, right? Um, I'm still sitting in cash. I have bought Estal. Not going to lie. I did buy all of my Estal. Um, but other than that, we're just chilling. Bye, JB. Maybe you exited a position in Luna Classic that you took on a chance. Exited that position, turned it on to Ethereum and bought a, a board a, a golf club NFT. That's what you did today, right? Hell yeah. I took a <laughs> chance on Luna Classic. Just, you know, it was one of those shots in the dark. I spoke about it on here before. I put a, a percentage into it, got back what I initially put in, and the rest it's just sat there. If it made money, it made money. If it went to nothing, I was fine with it. But I managed to li uh, li liquidate my whole position in Luna, and that paid for my board date. Got a golf club NFT today. Nice. Chris, yeah. you look exhausted. As you, were saying about, as you were saying about today, though, um, sorry, this week we've got the UK's inflation rate. We've got oh, that's the right, US, yeah. the Euro, all these inflation rates to come in. The ECB are going to talk about inflation rates. The FOMC's economic projections. So that's their sentiment for the next however many months. That's getting spoke about before the interest rate decision comes out. Then you've got the press conference. I think all these are going to be negative things and we're going to see the markets tank. My, yeah. that's, that's my... My guess, it's not advice. It's just purely a guess. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's a guess. I think it's factual. I think it's going to happen. Chris, talk to me, man. You, you're, I feel, do I need to wake you up over there? No, I'm, I'm good. I'm listening. I mean, you I'm, look so relaxed or you're meditating. What, are you Charles Hoskinson now? Are you, are you meditating in between conversations? <laughs> look, I'm just uh, like massively comfortable. It's, uh, if y'all can see him right now. <laughs> yeah, look, um, it's, uh, it's, it's, yeah, that's how I feel. No, nah, like um I when I'm comfortable, like I kind of feel like I'm more at my best. Um I, I just kind of yeah, I feel good. It's nice having two people on the podcast that, you know, I don't have to talk constantly um and and can listen as well. Like it's it's good. It's not like people are just reading off a screen. I like it. It's good. <laughs> yeah, I I mean, hey, we, we all know I talk too much, so that's fine though. No, um, like um yeah, I, I think there's an awful lot going on at the minute. I think you're right. I think, you know, expect some some pullback in, in the market. I just don't think that the volume um, is there. Like, I just don't think it'll last. And um, look, you know, people are quick to, to, to say, oh, like, bull run. <laughs> like, you know, the bottom's in. Um, but these people lack an awful lot of... Um, I want to say common sense, but that's probably not fair. Um, they lack experience. Yeah. I, and I don't, I don't. So Nick video earlier, he, he said there is the potential that this could be a trend to the upside. Um, but we'll, we'll, we'll see, we'll see what takes place. But I, I still 
just don't understand the whole moon boy thing. Um, if you just, if you just open your eyes and look at the stock market today, it goes up yep. hard and then it just drops, right? Every single time a CPI reading comes out or an FOMC meeting happens, one day it goes crazy up, the next day it falls straight back down. So anyways, I think those are our thoughts. We're going to leave those there. You guys know how we felt all along. We're still not at the bottom. The bottom's not in, in our opinions, and they are our opinions. You're allowed to have your own, but those are ours. Let's get into SBS. Let's talk about Mr. Bankman Freed finally being arrested um, down in the Bahamas. Chris, what's your, what's your take on it? How long is he going to jail for? Well, I mean, I think better late than never, right? Like, first off, um, you know, I, I really don't know. I, I kind of get this feeling that this whole process is going to be dragged out over a really long period before any real action is actually taken, if any at all, um, which, you know, is is sad, right? Like, in, in, in many different ways, because a lot of people... Um, had poor risk management and may have lost their entire life savings, you know, uh, companies going bankrupt. I, you know, I just, people losing their jobs, like you can look at it from many different angles. And I just think it's very, very sad. And I, I kind of feel like I'm, you know, banging the same drum in the respect that I really do believe, strongly believe that there needs to be far more severe, and I mean severe, consequences for for individuals you know like sam you know the hackers that keep hacking these protocols and bridge hacks and you know all this stuff in in crypto like I, i'm sick to death of seeing headlines that you know uh x protocols decided that they won't prosecute and uh told hackers they can keep 20 percent as long as they return the rest like i'm sick to death of seeing this stuff because it just it condones the actions of, you know, bad actions of, of, you know, people that are terrible and should be in the space. And it encourages people to do the same. It doesn't, you know, it's not encouraging the right behavior. I, I think there needs to be severe punishment. And I think that goes for, you know, and, and this would be questionable, but I think if, if the, these actions were were taken, I think we would see, a very different market but if your protocol gets hacked i think there needs to be a consequence for the people running the project like you know why should it be okay for lots of people to lose all of their money because your protocol was hacked you know i i, I just think that there needs to be some accountability and some some severe punishments because i think then people would only get into the space and do do things the right way and, and do the right level of due diligence before putting something live. I think they'll get there eventually once regulations are in place. But I think until regulations come about, I think people are still going to think they're invincible. Unfortunately for SBF, he's not invincible because the fool. I mean, they were talking about on CNBC this morning that basically you would. So FTX, like global FTX, right? You could send a, a million dollars to Alameda Research. That million dollars was supposed to then be transferred over to FTX, right? And it was supposed to show one for one. So basically, they just credited FTX, but then Alameda kept the, kept the money over here. Then Sam took that money and paid you know, for FTX Arena or whatever, basically, is how it's been mm. kind of construed. And it, that, that simple breakdown this morning kind of helped explain it a little bit better but i wanted to read off the uh eight let's see is it eight yeah eight counts uh of what he's being arrested for uh conspiracy to commit wire fraud on customers wire fraud uh, i'm sorry conspiracy to commit wire fraud on lenders wire fraud on lenders conspiracy to commit commodities fraud conspiracy to commit securities fraud conspiracy to commit money laundering and conspiracy to defraud the United States and violate the campaign finance laws. Those are pretty serious. If you ask me. Yeah. Yeah, they are. I, I, lock them I up. just think that lock them there's up. just so much, so much more to, to, to be dug into. I think there's more that hasn't been uncovered yet. 
Yeah, JB, what were you saying, JB? Sorry. Just lock lock them up, throw away the key. You know, this this guy's going to ruin a lot of people's lives, a lot of people's life savings, possibly due to their own fault for poor risk management. We're touching it a lot, but this guy's lost a lot of people, a hell of a lot of money. Somewhat got away with it. I know he's been arrested, but what's going to come of it? I'd like to see him go to jail for a hell of a long time. We see Do Kwon still running about, possibly hiding in Serbia. Maybe Sam should have jumped over there and hid with him so we'd never hear from him again, but hey-ho. But, you know, the whole thing we were talking about, these projects managing to get hacked, the solution's there, and they're not taking the steps to secure themselves, to secure the projects, and to secure the consumers that are buying off their platforms. We spoke about this before with the likes of Lossless. These projects are all there, ready to get used, put into place in a space to protect everybody. So why the hell are they not doing it? That's yeah. such a simple solution. And and I think the solution to to change the dynamic of how crypto projects are being run at the moment is to have a consequence if you don't, right? Like you said, and we've talked about it before, solutions are there. And I've said before, I don't want to be hearing uh, an apology that you know a protocol's been hacked when the solutions are there. But now I'm starting to look at you know what's happening in the space with the hacks with Sam and you know Doquan and 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 all of these you know let's just call them bells for for now right you know there should be punishment. What's there really a bell? Bell end. For the for the for the viewers in the states, what's a bell end? Wow. Do you want to do you, do you want to say that one, JB? <laughs> is it is it just a, a just a, a the, D the head? Of the like a oh okay, there we go. All right. Uh, <laughs> anyways, yeah. So the there was a they little... have them. They have them where you are. Felons? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I would call them assholes or you know whatever. <laughs> that's, 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 the that, that's the wrong anatomy. Uh, <laughs> anyways, there was some drama on Capitol Hill today, by the way, here uh, in regards to the SBF thing, because SBF was supposed to testify in front of Congress today. And the SEC knew that SBF was supposed to be there today. And they did it overnight so that he didn't go testify. Now, but my thought process is why didn't they let him go testify? Then you have stuff that you can use against the guy. The guy has completely incriminated himself the whole time he's been on all of these talks. Just let the guy continue to talk, right? Like let him be the idiot. But so instead, who came today uh, was FTX's new CEO, John Ray. John Ray took over FTX on November 11th basically told the committee that the problems at FTX were a accumulation of months or even years of bad decisions and poor financial controls. He said, this is not something that happened overnight or in a context of a week. John Ray, a longtime corporate restructuring expert. And the reason I'm saying this is because this guy is a big deal, right? Said the, the situation at FTX was worse than what he found at Enron two decades ago. Enron was one of the biggest corporate frauds in United States history. So I, I don't think I need to say that again, right? So this is the same guy that dealt with Enron that's looking at FTX. It's almost like I could send my son to go run FTX, basically, and it would probably look the exact same. My son's two and a half. That's basically what know, I reckon he, he might have done a better job, to be fair. <laughs> he might have. I, I think he'd be honest. I think your son would be honest about it at two and a half. It's crazy, crazy. Um, yeah, but look, um, I, I, I am seeing an awful lot of stuff on Binance, and I think a lot of this is linked to everything FTX because, you know, we can have one angle view on it, and uh, you know what we've just discussed about, you know, consequences for for you know uh, bad actors and consequences for, um, you know, hackers and and all of this and CEOs running projects. But on the flip side, you could look at it in a different way and you could say, well, what's the consequence for all these regulators, the SEC, you know, and uh, all, all of these lawmakers and, you know, uh, politicians and, you know, all that sort of stuff over in the US that were regularly meeting with Sam. Um, I think that I think in due time, that's going to come out. I think eventually yeah. it's going to come out. And you you see you see the you see the fud, and I'm going to label it up fud. There could be elements of truth to it, but the stuff on Binance at the minute, like I wanted is, to cover is, that. Is that all? You know, because of you know him highlighting 
FTX and FTT. You know, it's this. It just seems too much of a coincidence. Well, wait, you mean someone planting evidence or someone just well, putting not, out, putting not, out a not, story just to kind of mess with CZ? I think there's there's an element of people trying to cause trouble for for, for Binance. Um, you know, like some articles, some articles from 2018. You know, resurfacing. You know, I I just think that there's there's just quite a lot of like. I'm going to label it FUD. Like I'm not, I'm not suggesting stay on any exchange by any stretch of the imagination risk off, right? Preserve capital. Yeah. Nothing's changed. I said, preserve capital before FTX collapsed. I said, preserve capital. Yeah. should be your number one goal and aspiration closely followed afterwards by making money. Right. Because you don't want to have making money as your primary goal. Cause you could have been making money on FTX. Yeah, and you could have had all of your funds on there. Yeah, that's not preserving your capital. So yeah, I, I I do think that there's a lot of stuff that is I'm uneasy about it. Um, but I do think that there's a lot of fud about Binance, and uh, some of it is true to a point, but it's old. Well, that's crypto Twitter for you, though. No, this is this is media. But what I'm saying is crypto Twitter is. Mm is essentially becoming media, right? It's becoming the hub of spreading FUD. And you watched it this morning with mm. the dumping of Binance, right? Yeah. BNB dumping. And there was some someone I listened to this morning was saying that there was potential that people were dumping BNB and going straight into Bitcoin. That's why Bitcoin was surging, right? Mm. Like that's why Bitcoin started to move was because people were like, basically anyone right now, I feel like can get scared. Right. Yeah. If you see enough things, eventually you believe it. Right. You've said that before. If yeah, you see 100%. enough tweets talking about Binance being insolvent or Binance this, it's funny because CZ put out this morning, he was like, We've put out three weeks ago that we we're having scheduled maintenance. What is the problem? Like, what's all the FUD about? I don't get it. Yeah. yeah. But so it's where, where it where it actually originates. Like, it's like there's always smoke, you know, right? <laughs> like, yeah, you know, when there's a fire or whatever the saying is, but like the fire is a media outlet's put something out, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then everybody over on Twitter has seen the smoke and they're like, what's this? And then they share it, right? And it, it, it you're right. And I've said it many times, the more you're told something or, you know, the, you know, the it just becomes gospel truth, even though it isn't. So there, there was a guy that posted something this morning on Twitter that was like, uh, all caps. It was like, get your money off finance now, run for your life or some, some bullshit like yeah, that. Yeah. And it had... I think it had like 10,000 retweets and like, I'm sitting there, I'm just watching the likes just go crazy on. I'm like, who the hell is he anyways? First of all, I don't even know the, I've never seen him on there before, but it's just being retweeted like crazy. And it's like, people are just moving their money off. I, I'll be curious to see Nick's data tomorrow on exchanges and people moving their money off of exchanges and doing all that shit again. Like, is it going to be affecting the data? Yeah. I mean, likelihood is it will but like at the same time you know I, i've said it like regularly don't don't all of a sudden just forget what's what what's what's occurring here like don't just you know go back on exchanges and feel comfortable all of a sudden we haven't seen the full contagion yet like there is more to happen you can see exchanges moving their money though i mean you've got yeah. justin sun he, he moved 100 million dollars worth of usdc from circle into binance why? Well, I, I think a lot of that is to to get um, the stable coin back to peg. Um, but again, speculation might be wrong, um, you know, because I think their, their stable coin for Tron de-pegged to 97.997. Yes. Um, so it's probably to do with that, but nobody really knows. And maybe he's going to do a runner now it's just to get it off the exchange who knows I, I don't i'm not suggesting that is the case but you know nobody really knows right and um you know there's stuff that a lot of these exchanges and lending platforms they're trying to build up trust by showing their reserves right but they're labeling everything up in a misleading way which doesn't build trust i talk about trust so much but like if you're going to call something an audit Make sure it's a bloody audit. Don't just call it an audit when it's not an audit. When it, if you go into the small print, it says this is not an audit. Yeah, 
So you sh your terminology shouldn't be, here's our, here's our audit, right? Because it isn't right. one. Yeah, well, that's it, where regulation is going to help. Yeah, a hundred percent. But like, you're going to have to define the shit that you're putting out into the public, or yeah. face the consequences. Yeah, and I, I, I just think, um, how can I put this? Like, ZZ and Binance can't feel hard done by if they're using misleading terminology to describe something. In my opinion, like I've got no problems with ZZ, uh, and I, I think Binance is okay, and I think there's lots of fud. Um, but what I would say is it is misleading to call something a audit when it isn't. And next, so we're doing the same. People tell me, well, you need to go do your research, go look at their audit. It's not an audit. Basically, you know, Nexo and Binance have gone, this is, this is what we've got on a piece of paper and they've gone, oh, okay. Yeah. So you've got this, 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 and this. Yeah. Yeah. And they just write it down. Like they haven't, they haven't gone and seen the assets. Yeah. I mean, they, you know, they've just taken their word for it. It's like me telling you, um, you know, uh, Mike, that I've got 5 million, you know, Estal. Just because I say it, don't mean it's true. Just because I put it on a piece with, of paper. We spoke with one of the members on Discord yesterday, Chris. Hmm. It, sorry, it was me and Mike. And he brought our attention to another podcast. And I had a quick listen to it. And it was an auditor that came on talking about projects or people that he'd done audits for. And passed them over to the IRS and the IRS didn't blink an eye at them. That's kind of the, the long and short of what their podcast was about. So this guy is an actual auditor and he came on to the podcast and said, there's all these massive accounts and the IRS haven't even looked at them. They're not interested. So how much do you have to actually look into these things to think, well, where, where are they going to make a start? Yeah. I Look, um, I just think people need to use the right terminology. Like if it's not an audit, say what it is. Like you're still going to build you. I think you would build up more trust admitting something isn't a full audit, but saying like this, this is the reserves and stuff. Like, to be honest, I think the whole audit, you know, is a later waste of fucking time anyway, because you know, they're not saying what's liquid and what's not. And let's, let's be really factually like clear with people. It's not, these exchanges aren't run any differently uh, in terms of like assets that are available than say a bank. Right. If if a if everyone went to let's say a UK bank, um, NatWest, right? If everyone did a run on the bank at NatWest, NatWest doesn't have liquid funds to pay everybody back. So bear in mind it's you know, banking sectors all fully regulated and everything like that. They don't. So what on earth makes people think and believe the exchanges do? Why aren't they though? Like, why don't exchanges just hold one to one, just have it in a bank account? Well, because they need to make yield. So you know, there's going to be lending going on. There's going to be um, staking going on where it's locked up for periods of time. You sure. know, secured yeah. against loans. Um, there's going to be loads of different mechanisms, legitimate, you know, reasons for it. But they're not going to have one to one. So, you know, if, a, if an exchange does, fantastic. And that would have happened over a long period of time, building up that that asset, you know, so they've they've got, I guess, two pots. Yeah, one for all the yield and, you know, all the other activity and, and one for one for, for assets put on there. But you're still going to have to generate it. You know, so it's, it's one of those. It's, uh, it's an interesting topic. I, I just... I'm not buying a lot of what's been put out in the media, good or good or bad, right? Like I'm impartial to both good or bad. I just think risk off, uh, keep you keep your money and your crypto safe. You've you've touched on this before multiple times. So the crypto is not the issue here. Platforms right. are not the issue. People are the issue. People are the ones that are creating the problem. And it's still this exact same story that's ongoing. People are the issue here. And they're the ones that keep fucking everything up. Yeah, people exactly. Are, people's it's, always the issue to, to any problems. <laughs> yeah, you're not you're not doing crypto right. Like you know, if, if people are making all the the, the decisions, like it, it, you know, it's 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 about being decentralized enough that you know you can't get a bad actor. Like, let's be honest, right? What is the problem, right? People are the problem, but the underlying problem is greed. That's what it is. You know, yeah. One person, top of 
top of the tree of a project is or an exchange has got you know greedy and they've leveraged too much and they've you know taken risks that they shouldn't have taken and uh there should be consequences for those people and they should be severe so less people get into the space and take those risks because of greed i don't think it's really that that difficult you know maybe i'll be a no. president or a prime minister or something like sort this shit out well we'll see how long sbf gets for uh all this shit i just i'm really fearful that it's just going to be a long-winded dragged out affair with a really shit outcome that you know people are just not going to be happy with we'll see we'll see what we happens hey, shout, shout, shout out to canna uh canna man can uh canna man can canna man can was the one that sent uh that posted that other podcast that uh jb too so gotta shout out the, the discord sometimes you know um uh, but guys look we've been going for quite a while um I don't I've think got one we, last thing I want to yeah, bring up. Please, here. I was going to say, do we leave off of anything that we want to chat about? Charles Hoskinson. He reckons the Ripple case will be settled on September 15th. So when this goes out, this will obviously be tomorrow. So, I'm sorry, what September 15th? Yeah, sorry, this December 15th. Sorry, I'm looking at a different calendar here. Um, so yeah, he said that there's a possibility the Ripple case will be settled by December 15th. Why? So I think... I, I say he's heard rumors, um, but like, I I guess where I'm sat is that would be wonderful, um, but I think I've heard the same rumors and they're just rumors. So many times, so many times. Um, so yeah, look, let's let's see what happens. Uh, I I just yeah, I'd love to see it. Um, why yeah, would rumors. it? Why would it get? Well, could y'all fill me in. I'm confused. So, Rumor, rumors would have you believe that there's a settlement that's been agreed and is going to you know, all be completed on the 15th of December. Um, but it is just a rumor. Has there been any like paperwork that says that, that anybody's been able to show or is it no. somebody's mouth? Look, so. look, Nick, Nick's talked about this, you know, for, for the last month or so, people have been going, oh, it's going to be done this date. It's going to be done this date. Like it's going to be done this date. <laughs> Yeah. Like, you know, and when they pass, it's like there's always another date. Look, um, it'd be nice to see that happen, but I wouldn't hang my hat on it. Let's hope not, because I haven't bought my XRP yet. So let's hope it, <laughs> let's for uh for, for the sake of Mike's uh bags and you know being able to retire one day, let's hope that it didn't it's not gonna work out. But for those of you that hold XRP, I hope it happens so you can all become billionaires since it's going to go to what three thousand dollars a token right oh ten thousand maybe who who really knows right Look, um Crazy. i think there's like 10 10 decimals uh decibels uh points like you know for, for for xrp it's designed to be that that expensive um but look um jokes aside right like i don't i don't believe what i just said um <laughs> like yeah wouldn't that be wonderful but i just don't believe it um i i think that it's going to be an interesting week this week it's going to continue to be volatile be careful if you're trading make sure you're using stop losses and all that stuff don't get too comfortable on the exchanges um you know we we um suggest using ledger uh, there is a link in the description of the video um it is an affiliate link we do get a kickback it supports the channel uh, and sometimes if you're in the discord you might get a cheeky uh discount code every now and again because uh I, I do try my luck a little bit with ledger and and see what i can do fantastic mm. that's awesome Any, anything else boys that we want to cover i think chris have you not got one more shout out to maybe do about a bobblehead a bubble oh yeah i do actually yeah I, i've done a couple head. of shout outs for it um so uh i tried to find the name now because the name eludes me bear with me it's a good shout i didn't even think to do that um i'll quickly jump back in before you go i'm sitting here watching on the side here i know i really shouldn't i should be concentrating but i'm watching the magician that is Lionel messi absolutely tear croatia apart teed up julian alvarez 3-0 to argentina this is, i've quite enjoyed this world cup obviously it's coming ahead soon as well so i just hope everybody else is enjoying what's going on right now enjoying the market movements Keep an eye on the market movements. As I said, we've got a lot going on this week. Keep yourself safe out there, guys. It's all good. Yeah, awesome. it's funny. Within the sorry, Chris, I'm going to cut all you right. off one last time because I'm really good at cutting people off. Um, 
<laughs> I know earlier I said the Dow was red. It's been 20 minutes and now the Dow is back up half a percent. So literally the market has no idea what the hell to do with today's CPI reading clearly. So anyways, go ahead. Yeah. So Nashi82 is an absolute legend and sent me a Farmer Joe bubblehead um, from Cornucopius. Now, I guess the backstory to all of this, um, very kind, uh, much appreciated, um, was like a complete tool that I am occasionally. Um, I lost my password for the wallet that I use to purchase Cornucopius NFTs. So um, I missed the mint. Like, yeah, it's on a piece of paper somewhere. And I will find it. Um, and I need to find it before the 19th because I am going to get a race suit for sure. You would think that you would have a safe at this point, maybe, that you keep things like that in, <laughs> Chris. Yeah, but like if you were going to rob a house, a safe would be like probably like the thing that you'd go for, right? You attach it to the drywall and to the studs. Like, like as if you're a bank. Yeah, yeah. But like what I'm saying is... Don't you have like keep... 450 ledgers? Like, I don't know, just call me, just call me mental or whatever. But like, if I was going to break into somebody's house looking for something valuable, the first place I would take that individual to would be the safe. Yeah, but the safe. Okay. Anyways, we're going off into a tangent, but if I get a safe, <laughs> if I get a safe, it's going to be attached to my wall. Like, yeah. It's going to be mine, attached is, to the mine is as well. Yeah. But I don't keep my valuables in it. What are you going to bring a chainsaw into my house to try to get my, to get off? No, but like I would just my dog will bite your leg off by the time you try to just I would just force you to open it, Mike. It'd be easier. Oh, facts, yeah, true. Yeah, so so like not being funny, like I'm not going to keep my valuables in my (laughs) safe in my house. Just doesn't make sense. (laughs) Okay. Anyways, where are we going with that? The bobblehead. Sorry, (laughs) there's no point breaking into my house because there's nothing valuable in my safe. (laughs) Where we're going with that? I'll steal your damn coy. Okay. <laughs> cool. Yeah, that's probably that's more what I'm going point. after. <laughs> <laughs> All uh, right. So shout out to Nashi, right? Yeah. Big shout out. Guy. Big thank you. Good guy. Yeah, I think he smashed through with uh what we did earlier with the Board Ape Golf Club too. Yeah, seventy seven percent sold now. Is it? It's been moving up steadily. It started yeah. when, we, when we hopped on here, it was at sixty percent. So it looks like there's like maybe uh, five or six left. So probably by the time this goes out, they'll be all gone. But that's insane. Yeah. Almost sixty of them sold. But you know, look, these are the sort of the the types of projects that are going to be available for for people that you know have access. So if you don't have a cheeky verse VIP pass, you know, and you want to get into to private sales, take a look. Or if you want to get a, a race suit for the Cornucopius game, um, super super value like value really like price wise um and you'll get into to get private sales in the discord so definitely worth exploring if that is something of interest and then you can use that race suit on the cheeky gaming channel yep it's gonna be cool look how all that just connects together and then if you did not get on the board ape golf club hype you can buy mine for exactly 10 eth so just <laughs> make sure you hit me up on that one okay all right, guys, well, you're, you're going to be gutted when people like hit you up for it and it's worth 20 and you're just got to sell it for 10. Hey, it's OK. I made like, what, 20 X on that. I'll be OK. <laughs> I'll hey, we just talked it. about we just talked about greed. So we can't be too greedy out in the streets, right? Yeah, yeah it's true. It's true. Just my son's got to eat, safe, Mike, because I'm coming for you. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck getting past my dog. <laughs> yeah, yeah, probably not. Plus, probably. you live miles away. Yes, <laughs> you're not going to happen. All right. Thanks. To everyone for listening in today, JB, do you have any quick final thoughts for everyone as we go into the next couple of days of the week? Just, you know, it's going to be guys, stay safe, stop loss, risk management, stay safe. We're going to see some big moves. I feel look after yourselves. Chris. Yeah. Look, um, just be safe. Like, you know, lots of scammers about, you know, they're everywhere. Just, uh, you know, if it seems too good to be true, then it probably is. Uh, so yeah, it's kind of my uh, last little bit. I kind of kind of said everything and covered everything else. Yeah, so I think you've go. been. I think you've been talking today for about fourteen hours. So we'll let you. We'll let you get on with maybe some sleep today. So, anyways, everyone, thanks so much for listening in. Make sure you smash the like, smash that subscribe button, and we will catch you in the next one. Take care.